Magicers. I hope you're having a great magical day where you are as I'm having a pretty good morning where I am. So I just pulled into work and I thought I would vlog with y'all today. It has been a very, very long time since I uploaded a Wednesday vlog day. And um, I think the last time I did it one was Easter. I think that's the last time I vlogged. And today I have Brenton with me. He's sitting over here. Y'all can't see him, but he's actually coming into class with me today. Um, Zach is away at camp and um, Brenton's not quite there where we let him stay home by himself. So um, he's coming with me and he came with me last night and he sat in on my class and when he, he only stayed for the first half hour because Dan came in to the gym and did his workout and then he took Brenton home for me. But um, Brenton got to see me teach and when I got home I was like, what do you think, buddy? And his words were, you kill them. I kill them. He says I torture my students. And I told Brenton, I said, I do not torture my girls. I just challenge them. And I think to Brenton, he just thought it was a tough workout. Torture. I torture. I, I, I torture them is what he said. So I just challenge them, ladies. I think Brenton just kind of looked at the workout and was like, man, that's a hard workout. But I do challenge my students to, um, you know, give their all and I motivate them through my words while, you know, I'm teaching. But according to him, I'm tough and I torture them. <laughs> so anytime any of you want to come take my fitness class, y'all can and y'all can see for yourself. But I really am a nice instructor. So after we get done here, we're going to head over to Kroger's. I have to pick up a few things there. And I did purchase a lifestyle, like I purchased a major lifestyle, what do you call it? Purchase. I made a major lifestyle purchase um, this past weekend and I wanted to share that with y'all today too. So. I'll show you that after we get home, eat lunch and shower, but um, let me get in there and teach and then we'll head to Kroger's. So I will see y'all in a little bit, okay? We are at Kroger's, guys, and Brenton is picking out his lunch. This one right here. That is, no, we don't yeah. need that big one, Brenton Daniel. Yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. I do, I never get that much of sushi before. This one looks good. Brenton went sushi for lunch. My boys, well, our whole family loves sushi. Um, how about this one? Yeah, that one looks good. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Got it. So, which one did you get? I got the happy. Ooh, that one looks good. Water. Okay, mommy gets a piece of that. Are you sure? <laughs> you want to say hi to everybody? No. No? Okay. Guess not. Chopsticks. Oh, that one looks good. That's another one. That looks good too. We've gotten this big one before. We got this one for Valentine's one year. Yeah, but I ate the most of it. Oh, this one looks good too. You know what I just realized in that one? What? I didn't get any. These chicken kebabs, guys, look so good. So I'm gonna get these for grilling. Yes. Tonight we're having spaghetti, but tomorrow we could do kebabs. No, nope, just the six kebabs. Thank you. Thank you. Those look good, and they're on sale today too. Yummy. So guys, we just got home from Kroger's. I'll just show you really quick. So I just picked up a few things, not a lot. Um, like I said, I, I go to Kroger's in between my commissary shopping out at the base. If you're new to my channel, um, Dan is retired military, so we are a retired Air Force family. But Brenton decided to switch out his sushi, and he got this. And I told him he has to give Mommy at least one bite. And um, tonight we're having spaghetti, but I picked up these kebabs for tomorrow for the grill. They just look so good, the chicken and the vegetables. So I picked up that. And I discovered these this month. You'll probably end up seeing this in my monthly favorites at the end of the month. But guys, these are so good. And I am a pizza girl. And I get really busy. And sometimes I need something really quick. But I love these. But what I really like about them is the sodium count. Because sometimes like entries, help, even the healthy entries can be loaded with so much sodium. So I got um, the California pizza 
uh, kitchen crispy flatbread margarita and there is the nutritional information on it if you're interested so i thought for 190 calories for one and they're decent sizes you only need one so um the barbecue rest, uh, recipe chicken one has a little just a little bit more sodium but it's still under the 600 gram uh, sodium count for me so i try to watch my sodium but for 200 calories guys that is great we picked up some ice cream. We we kind of chomp on ice cream in the summer more than any other season. So Brenton picked out the mint chocolate chip and I picked out cookies and cream. And um, yeah, we got that. So um, he's going to his church camp next week and he likes to put these in his lunches. So we picked up um, these and we picked up three of those. So. They're really good, and sometimes during the school year, I will pick these up for their lunches as well. Then we got some shrimp kebabs too, because I love seafood. And then Dan loves to grill vegetables on the grill, especially in the summer months. So we got these, um, onions, zucchini, and squash. And then of course, yummy asparagus. So we'll be grilling this stuff tomorrow on the grill. And I got the sushi buddy if you want to chow down on it. He's like standing over there. Can I eat this? And then I got more asparagus with mushrooms and red onion. Peppers. We won't grill all of this tomorrow, but we will grill some of it. And broccoli and cauliflower. So picked that up. Um, avocados. Love avocados all by themselves. Guys, avocados is a healthy fat. It's it good. good. You like it? Yeah, those things on top, like those puffs the little puff things good. yeah um these are good for your um, high density lipoprotein cholesterol because it's filled with good healthy fats mono and poly mm. you like it yeah okay so pico we love pico in our house this is good just in a salad it's also good if you're going to be marinating um chicken or meat or anything Delicious. like that on the grill and then tonight we're having spaghetti so I just picked up some garlic uh, bread to throw in the oven with dinner. But I'm going to put all this away and make some lunch really quick. Yeah. So guys, I thought I would show you my lunch real quick. It's something I usually don't do, but I thought I'd share with you today. So I got some carrots and I used just a little can of tuna. These are like the lunch size ones. And then I used... Uh, what do I want to say a one and a half ounce of avocado and I just kind of put my avocado in there so in place of the mayonnaise I use avocado in my tuna and then I wanted I didn't put this today but I wanted to show you just to kind of give you an idea so sometimes when I make tuna I will put a little bit of cranberries in there or chopped up gripes and then I also sometimes put pecans or almonds in my tuna sandwich it just depends on my caloric intake for the day but I didn't do it today. And then if you're curious to know what kind of bread I use, I buy the double fiber. Now, I don't talk about nutrition too much on my channel, even though I'm a personal trainer and um, fitness instructor. But I do buy this bread because of the number one ingredient right there, the word whole. The very first ingredient is whole. And then it's wheat flour. Sometimes breads will just say ingredients and then it'll just say, a wheat flour um, you got to be careful on that you want your very first word to read whole and I really like this bread because it is it's 90 calories a slice and it's just a hearty bread sometimes you get those hearty you know breads that have like you know flax seeds and all kind of different seeds in them and they're like 130 calories a slice and you're like oh my goodness 260 calories just for your bread but this one I like because um, it's 90 calories a slice. So, But that is my lunch. I'm going to eat it, take a shower, and then I'm going to show you the major purchase I bought. I'm back, guys. So I did a couple of chores around the house, and I managed to put myself together to look presentable to finish out today's video vlog. So I mentioned earlier that I made a big lifestyle purchase. And you know, when you're talking about lifestyle, guys, um, lifestyle pertains, you know, to anything that um, is part of your lifestyle that 
you know, sparks your, in, you know, your interest. Like for example, um, I love to exercise. It just also happens to be my job. And, you know, exercise is a part of my lifestyle. Doing Disney puzzles is a part of my lifestyle. Disney is a part of my lifestyle. And doing crafts is a part of my lifestyle. And I've shown y'all many times on my channel how I enjoy doing, you know, all types of crafts, especially making deco mesh wreaths and holiday wreaths and how I decorate the house and um, crafts is just a part of my lifestyle. So is cooking and baking and doing cakes and all that jazz. So for about, I wanna say, probably since we got back from Disney, actually I had thought about making this purchase before we went to Disney World, okay? And I'm gonna show you, I have the box right here. Uh, but I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about it. But before we went to Disney World, I had thought about making this purchase. And I kind of just put it on the back burner because we were heading off to Disney for our 25th wedding anniversary. And when we got, while I was in Disney, I noticed I was trying to look for certain merchandise and I couldn't find it. And um, I kind of got discouraged about that. And I was like, you know, well, I could just make it myself is what I thought. And then when I got home, I kind of thought more and more about it. So I made a purchase and guys, I, I know you're like Rachel to show us, but I just want to kind of explain myself. When I decided to buy this, how can I put it? I am very intimidated by what I bought, okay? It, yes, it is an object, and believe it or not, objects can intimidate you, okay? Young kids get intimidated by roller coasters all the time, and it's an object. Um, but I'm a little fearful of this item that I bought. I'm definitely intimidated by it. We bought it on Sunday, and guys, I didn't open it up till Wednesday. I just like sat it in literally the corner, and I kind of like would just go by and stare at it, and walk away and and go stare at it and walk away. And Dan was like, well, you gotta open it, honey, cause you gotta make sure it works, right? And I was like, I know, but I was even nervous to open it because it intimidates me. And because I know, I used to know how to semi use one, but I, that was like when I was in the seventh grade and I don't know how to use one now. So I made a big craft purchase, and like I said, I'm very intimidated. And before I show you, number one, do not make fun of me, okay? Because I'm being upfront with y'all when I say that this intimidates me. And secondly, don't be mean by leaving a mean comment, but I'm fearful of this machine, and I am intimidated by it. But it is right here. Are you ready? Okay. Right there, guys. Look what I bought. Here's the box. I bought a sewing machine and I am so intimidated by this machine. I'll show you here in a minute what it looks like and some of the some of the side items I bought for it. But guys, I am super, super intimidated by it and I'm gonna tell you why. Because when I was in the seventh grade, I took home economics. So um, our final project was to make an apron. So I learned how to thread a sewing machine. I learned how to use a sewing machine. And I even made an apron and I got an A in home economics. But I never really continued sewing after that. And you think I would have because my mother is a sewer. She can take a newspaper and make a pattern out of a newspaper and come up with a dress, okay? Um, so she she could just visualize the pattern without having to go to the store to buy one, okay? So um, that is how creative she was with the sewing machine. And I grew up where my mother made a lot of my dresses and, um, you know, with using her sewing machine. So you would think I would, you know, have, you know, this gift for sewing because my mother did. And it wasn't, I don't want to, I don't want to, how can I put this? My, my mother was a baker and she was a cook and she was a sewer. And I picked up the baking and I picked up the cooking because she ran her own catering company in the 1970s. She did wedding cakes and parties. And, you know, I picked up the baking and the cake decorating and all of that. But not, not to say anything negative about my mother. It's just that sewing wasn't like instilled in me. It's like 
that that part of it wasn't fostered in into me. I, I, I don't know why, maybe because I wasn't like, you know, show me, show me, you know, I, I don't know. All I know is I, I have a mother that can sew, but I, I can't. And um, it's something that a couple of years ago I thought about doing, but then I was like, no. Well, just before I left for Disney, there were like Disney items that I wanted to buy and kind of create myself before the Disney trip, but I, I, didn't, I didn't have a sewing machine to do it and I didn't know how to sew. And then when we got back from Disney, there was a couple items I wanted to look for in Disney, but they didn't sell it. And I was just like, you know, I want to be able to create this. And in order to do that, I have to be able to know how to sew. So I started to look into sewing machines when we got back from Disney World. And some of these sewing machines, oh my magical word, guys, they are so complex. I was just like, okay, now they're computerized. Now some of them have so many stitches. The, the one I bought has like a hundred different stitches. I didn't even know there was that many stitches, okay? And it's, it's, it's computerized, it has different buttons to push. And like I said, I'll show you in a minute. But then you have some that are sewing machines and embroider machines and um, there are just so many different things you can do within the sewing machine. And when I was looking online at different ones and watching different YouTube videos on reviews, I discovered that, okay, these are not cheap items. And I had told Dan, I said, I don't want to invest in a really expensive one because I personally do not want to feel overwhelmed because I have not touched a sewing machine since the seventh grade. So I can sew a button, I can do a zipper, I, I can sew a straight line on a piece of fabric just with a needle and a thread, I can do that. Uh, well, not a straight line, but I, you know, I can, I can sew, you know, with my hands, but I've never, came across using a sewing machine again after I took home economics. So I told Dan, I don't wanna really invest in a really expensive machine because I'm what you call a beginner and I don't want a machine that's gonna overwhelm me because I am already intimidated by this one and I get the impression that it's a basic one. I don't know enough about sewing machines to know, but I this one, I found on sale and that was a big plus so Dan was like well just keep looking around and once you once you find one that you think you like you know let me know and you know we'll, we'll go and get it so he was very supportive and the fact that um, I wanted to attempt this new hobby and incorporate this into my crafts you know so that's why I call it a lifestyle purchase because I'm incorporating it into my craft world which is part of my lifestyle so let me show you the machine really quick and I'll let you know where I picked it up and we'll take it from there but guys I am so nervous about this I really am so guys here's the sewing machine it's right here and it is a singer and um i remember when i first took it out of the box i did think okay this is a beautiful um sewing machine and um i got excited so that's a big positive because when you're afraid of something but you look at it like again like a roller coaster it, and you get excited about it then you're more than willing to move forward and maybe get on the roller coaster so for me with the sewing machine i opened it i got excited i turned it on and i was like okay okay maybe maybe we can be friends you know and maybe i can figure this thing out so my mother-in-law which i'm eternally grateful for is a sewer she has a sewing machine and she knows how to sew so she is coming over next weekend to show me how uh to do the basics how to thread my um bobbin how to you know thread the the sewing machine i mean i learned all of that at home economics guys but i i, I really just don't remember and i remember plugging it in and um at first i was like is it gonna beep is it gonna make a noise so the anticipation of that kind of had me a little nervous but when i plugged it in i remember i plugged it in and it like it lit up like right here it lights up with an led and i kind of jumped and then i saw the little computer screen and i started paying attention to like all of i don't know if y'all can see but it's got like different stitching patterns and then the computer buttons and i'm like this must be my my work panel and 
this is a little fearful because I know that I need to be punching in some numbers based on the numbers that are below that. I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I just know that this is relevant and it's very important and I need to know how to use this. So thank goodness this came with a DVD for me to watch um, because I am such, it says ready, said so DVD because I am a beginner. Now, <coughs> excuse me, like I said, I wanted to look for a sewing machine that I didn't invest a lot of money in because I'm not a novice, you know, a novice sewer. I am totally beginner. So to invest in a really expensive machine, then it must mean that it does a really a lot of stuff. And at that point, it could be too complex for me and I get discouraged. So I wanted to find something that that was kind of basic, I guess. And I know this said that it has, you know, like a hundred stitches. I'll be honest with y'all. I didn't know there was like a hundred plus stitches. And I'm like, there is? Okay. Shows you how much I know. So on um, a Tuesday mornings, I got an ad. It came June, the first week of June, and the ad started June the 4th. But I did not look at it until the week, uh, the Sunday, June 11th. I had uh, kind of like piled up my coupons and my ads in the kitchen. I was like, okay, I really need to look through these. And wouldn't you know it, at Tuesday mornings, look guys, ta-da! Right there on the front cover was an ad for a sewing machine. And it was $339 at the regular store, but at Tuesday mornings, it was $169. And if you're not familiar with Tuesday mornings, it's kind of like, you know, the website overstock.com. That's kind of like how Tuesday mornings is when stores get overstocked on merchandise or they're maybe going to be discontinuing a certain merchandise places like Tuesday mornings will get it. Um, it's a little different than big lots in the fact that it, I've gone in there before and I have found great stuff from, you know, Macy's and Dillard's and Nordstrom's and even Marcus. I've even found uh, the brand Sonoma, which is Kohl's. So um, they had about five of these in stock. And when we got there, I was so thrilled. And I was more thrilled about the price, to be honest with you, because I did not want to invest a lot of money into a sewing machine until I got better and better, better and better in it. Then I can see where you can possibly upgrade to a more expensive sewing machine. Like I, I can understand that with me being a beginner I, right now, guys, I just need to know how to sew a straight line, let alone, I need to know how to thread my machine, work my bobbin and the whole bit. So what inspired me to buy this? Just before we left for Disney, I went to the Disney Park app and I was looking over some things and I couldn't find what I was looking for. And I said, well, you know, I bet you when I get to Disney, I can find it. We all know I like to wear hair bows, okay? And um, they inspire me, especially polka dotted hair bows. When we went to Disney in 2015, I found this chunky bow, okay? As you can see, it's chunky and it's stuffed and it's polka dotted. And I loved it and I wear it a lot in my hair, okay? I, I love this, this, you know, rubber band bow. When we went to Disney, I was looking for more of those, but in different colors. And what I want is I want this bow, okay, by itself sold in Disney and, you know, Minnie Mouse themed, whether it's multiple, you know, different color bows with polka dots on it or Minnie Mouse on it. I couldn't find anything other than this one again that was really chunky and fluffy. And I told Dan, I said, they just, why don't they, why don't they make these? Like, I, I don't get it. People would buy it, right? And he's like, well, you know, you should think about maybe just making them yourself. And which brought me back to the whole kind of been thinking about getting a sewing machine thing. So when I got home from Disney, I got online on, uh, first I got online just to kind of price out um, sewing machines. And I was like, oh my goodness, guys, some of these sewing machines can run up to two grand. Then I watched YouTube videos for tutorials on reviews on sewing machines. Then I watched on how to make like stuffed bows 
tons of videos out there on how to make just your traditional hair bows, but I'm looking for, you know, the ones where you can make stuffed bows. And I got different videos, and I got ones that showed you how to make it, you know, no sew stuff bows with just hot glue guns. I got some where people sewed it by hand, and then some people actually just did it, you know, with a sewing machine. And I have to be honest with you, when the people who used a sewing machine did it, their bows just, how can I put this? Not knocking anybody who uses a hot glue gun. I use hot glue guns when I do my crafts. It's just that my whole project isn't done with a hot glue gun. And I'm not knocking ones who, you know, sew it by hand, you know. But when they used the sewing machine, the bow just looked more clean, more lined, and it looked more like professional, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And I'm like, Rachel, if you want to make these, you got to learn how to sew, girl. You got it. You, you have to take that leap and get yourself a sewing machine if you want to start learning how to make these. And there's other Disney things that I want to try out too that require a sewing machine. So I went on ahead and invested in that. I did pick up some supplies. I picked up like some uh, fluffy um, uh, polyfill, okay? I did pick up some basic... Um, sorry. I did pick up some basic, you know, fabric to get started on just to practice. And, um, I picked up some extra, you know, um, bobbins to, you know, practice, you know, with that. But guys, I'm not going to lie to you. This is all new to me. This is, you know, uncharted water and I'm definitely nervous. So if any of you out there own a sewing machine and you can offer me any kind of encouragement or tips, I would really appreciate it. But I'm willing to try, I'm willing to make the effort and I'm definitely willing and eager to learn. So I'm very happy about the purchase and I look forward to my mother-in-law showing me you know, what I, you know, what, what I can do with this machine. So, yeah. So that is it for today's vlog, guys. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me today. If you're not already a Life in Disney Masketeer, you can feel free to hit that little subscribe button down below. And if you currently are a Life in Disney Masketeer, thank you so much, guys, for support Life in Disney and taking time out of your day to watch my videos. So till next time, y'all take care. Y'all have a magical day and a magical week, Masketeers. I will see y'all later. Bye, guys.